had a few questions about setting up doors needle valves on the ZD30. That valve you can see with the blue face is my needle valve. It's a 1/8 BSP DV06 valve. On the back of the valve it has 1/8 uh, BSP fittings uh, suitable for 3/16 fuel hose. Now 3 16th fuel hose is basically what I've used across in, in most cases uh, here to give it a bit of robustness, particularly through the firewall. There's already a hole in the dash. Uh, it's just a matter of taking out a plastic plug, getting a file, opening the hole up a little bit, and uh, it's quite easy to fit in. I don't use my needle much anymore uh, because my vehicle is quite happy with the way I have the V&T set up. Now moving to the engine bay. On the front of my uh, cross-country intercooler there are two boost points. The blue hose uh, is boost over to the map switch. The, the black hose uh, on that T is the main boost line to gauges and to the doors. This one runs back on this side, it's in 3 16th uh, fuel hose. And again, we have uh, barb fitting there. My gauge, the uh, supply to the gauge is 1 8 nylon tube, so I have a quick fit coupling. Um, connected up to uh, 1 8 BSP barb fitting and then I just have some 6mm uh, nylon hose over the top of the 1 8 hose to give it a bit of protection where it goes back through the firewall underneath the uh, booster there. Okay, so the boost then travels under the intercooler and across to, uh, that's just a joiner there, nothing else. Um, then that runs through the back over to the solenoid valve. Now the solenoid valve is a normally closed valve. So with no power, that valve is closed. This is my boost coming in. This goes to the high uh, doors. When I flick the switch inside, the boost will then shortcut and go to the low side doors. So this one's set at 10 psi, that one is set at 18 and a half psi. All right. There are the two doors valves there. Again, the top one is the low side, the bottom one is the high side. The blue hose is on the back. This is the vacuum end of the doors. And these hoses run across and we'll now work on them. The lower one you can see there runs across to the VNT. And just in front of it, as it enters the VNT, I've got a lawnmower uh, fuel filter. On the dyno I've had up to eight horsepower uh, variation due to bounce from the doors and the um, and the, the VNT diaphragm. Uh, fitting this um, little surge tank in there it took that problem right away. Now we'll follow this hose which is comes from the vacuum source. Right. So that runs over through the original damper, past that two piece, I'll explain that later. Then that runs over under the IC over to the original pickup point from the direct to the vacuum pump. Coming back to uh, this two piece, <coughs> uh, that runs back into the cabin and I Occasionally, it's blocked off in the cabin, but occasionally I rig up an old analog vacuum gauge I've got just to check the vacuum uh, that I have. 
Now coming back to this T piece, this is the one that goes to the uh, to the doors side. This then runs back through the cabin into the needle valve. All right, so top one to the needle valve. The bottom one is the return from the needle valve. And then it runs across and goes directly to the resonator, bypassing the vacuum switch. We'll get a look at the vacuum switch. That's the vacuum switch there, which you can see is blocked on one end, looped on the other two. It doesn't matter which way you do that, you can do it both ways, but it is important that that be bypassed. This is to get good linear boost control. That's bypassed, and you go straight to the um, uh, straight to the resonator. Okay, now if you don't have a cross country IC, this is where I picked up my original boost uh, when I had my standard IC. That's just actually blocked now so it doesn't do anything. But that's quite a simple way to, uh, to pick up boost because that pipe's quite easily removed. Okay, I hope that helps somebody.